Welcome to MCN and welcome to a road test with a difference because this is our first ride review of the 2023 Yamaha R1 GYTR. Now before we get into the bike itself, I think it's important to define what GYTR actually is. Uh, now GYTR stands for Genuine Yamaha Technology Racing. Uh, and basically it's a selection of bolt-on bits that you can add to either your track bikes, so your R3, your R6, your R7 and your R1, or your sort of off-road motocrossy type bikes as well. And that's everything from different forks to wheels to tires to wiring looms, ECUs, bodywork, basically loads and loads of stuff that allows you to make your bike go faster around the track or, you know, go faster around the motocross track at the weekend. Uh, and all these parts are available through things called Yamaha Pro Shops. Now there are 17 of those in Europe as we stand in September of 2022. And uh, Yamaha have actually said that they're going to look to raise this to 20, uh, 25 dealerships going forward. So GYTR parts have actually been available for the R1 for a number of years now, but for 2023, Yamaha have kind of taken a step forward and they're now selling you a bike with a kit already installed, hence why this machine's called the R1 GYTR. And basically what it is, is it, it takes the standard 998cc four-cylinder superbike that Yamaha will sell you to go on the road and track days and stuff like that, um, and they'll add 25 non-road homologated parts. So that's everything from bodywork uh, to a different wiring loom to a track ECU, uh, ABS emulator, race bodywork, uh, and a few other bits and bobs as well, uh, just to basically take that bike from being your standard road bike to a dedicated track machine. And Yamaha say that these changes bring it in line with uh, FIM Stock 1000 regulation. So it's sort of like a base for, uh, for a club racer or maybe uh, a lower league British Championship racer or someone who's just really into their track days. Uh, we've got no prices yet, but again, as we stand now, Yamaha say they reckon it's gonna be around 25 to 30,000 euros and it should arrive in the first quarter of 2023. So on top of the 25 parts that your, your 30,000 euros gets you as standard, uh, the GYTRs that we rode on the launch had a bit more about them. So, uh, so the, the standard GYTR bike actually gets the same forks and shock as the road legal R1, but our bike was littered with Olins. Likewise, the front brake calipers on the standard GYTR are the same four piston radials that you get on the standard R1, but with a different piston kit in there. Uh, but ours had Brembos as well and special Brembo discs, and we can put all that detail below uh, if we need to. Um, on top of that, uh, the standard bike gets sort of plain white bodywork for you to add your, your sponsors or your racing livery or whatever you want to add to it. But ours also, you'll see, had a, a lovely aftermarket finish, which again is an optional extra. On top of that, we also had things like steering dampers we also had uh, racing bracketry as well so we uh, all of the the road going switch gear had gone and we had a number of sort of colored buttons that looked like they should be on a playstation controller rather than a motorbike i didn't know what all of them did but seeing seeing them there in front of me you know really made me feel like a factory racer on top of that there's no key uh, it's a it's a race fuel filler cap and and loads of other bits we also were running uh, bridgestone slicks as well and, and the standard bike gets bridgestone r11 sort of treaded grippy track day rubber instead and on top of all that if your wallet stretches far enough yamaha will even sell you a pro version which is basically uh, a world superbike um, for the track that you can own um, with parts that have been developed by the likes of top rack uh, and locatelli and world superbikes so you get the same fuel tank as the wsb bike you also get a different swing arm you get a carbon fiber subframe you get so many extras but uh, i mean for me that's probably a little bit overkill uh, and i dare say for you guys as well that's probably a little bit overkill so let's get into the bike that we rode then and uh, i'll start off by saying that you know I've, I've done a little bit of club racing but really my experience level is sort of fast group track day rider so um, you know i was interested in riding this because yamaha say that i'm the sort of demographic for this bike they're people who are keen on track days um, that want to take that riding to the next level uh, now we rode the standard r1 first and then we jumped on the uh, the gytr and the first thing that came to or, or, or was immediately obvious was just how much roomier the uh, the race bike was which uh, sort of really shocked me that the bars were a little bit more splayed the pegs were a little bit lower and it just allowed you to sort of get off the bike a bit more sort of that that more friendly ergonomic just sort of took away some of that intimidation and allowed me to sort of shift my body weight around and focus more on actually taking the turn 
rather than worrying about getting from one side of the bike to the other in a fluid motion. Uh, so that was actually a really pleasant surprise. Uh, also impressive for me was the speed. Now I am, uh, as I said before, sort of your standard track day rider really. And, and I don't really get to ride litre bikes very often. So, so every time I throw my leg over a thousand cc bike, I'm, I'm really impressed. But this thing was really, really fast. Now we actually tested this bike at Paul Ricard circuit in the south of France. It's where they do the French Formula One. Uh, and it's an amazing track and it's, you know, a, a great test for a bike like this because there's really long straights, wide, fast, open corners, and also nagery corners as well. And, um, you know, if you wanted a sense of speed like no other, you need to go to the Mistral straight on, uh, on Paul Ricard uh, because it gives you an opportunity to, to max out bikes like this. And uh, uh, looking at the dash, the, the GYTR gets to a claimed 300 kilometers an hour in fifth gear. Uh, and then you've got time to hook into sixth gear and then rev all the way round to 13,000 RPM in top. So I've honestly no idea how fast we were going, but I can tell you it was really chuffing quick. Uh, and, and, and helping me uh, go that fast was the bodywork. So the bodywork on the GYTR is different to the road bike, obviously it's got rid of all of your road gubbins anyway, uh, but you get a specialized screen that's a lot taller. And actually that gave me more opportunity to hunker down, get right in close to the tank and get out of the wind. And, and, and that meant that when you're going at that ridiculous speed, you're not actually getting fatigued. You know, we did 20 minute sessions and, you know, six or seven laps doing that super long straight at that speed. My, my neck should have been folding in like an accordion, but it really didn't. And, and by the end of the session, I was, I was still okay. And my head still felt like it wasn't going to fall off my shoulders. So that is a, a really big plus point. And, you know, if Yamaha did that, that screen maybe for the, for the standard bike, I think, I think a lot of uh, standard R1 customers would really, really appreciate it. Um, and that, yeah, that was, a, that was a real highlight uh, for, for me and something that, that really stood out quite clearly. Another thing that stood out was the handling. Now, as standard, the GYTR gets the, the same KYB forks and shock as the, uh, as the standard road bike car one. Uh, but ours, as I said before, got a little bit of Olin's bling. Uh, and what an amazing package it was. Uh, you know, I'm only scratching the surface of bikes like these. I'm not a racer, really, uh, as much as I tell myself sometimes that I am. And um, it, it was just so good. It was so compliant it was so stable braking at that speed and you know holding a line when you accelerate and it, it whatever you wanted it to do it, it would do at my skill level um and and it was just sort of better than me in, in every single way and then when you you tip into the corner there was plenty of confidence at the front obviously aided by those slick tires it held a line through the middle of the corner and 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 it was sort of planted on the exit you you can tell i like it basically uh the thing uh there was a couple of things that sort of did stand out so so between second and fourth when accelerating i did get a little bit of a wobble through the bars um which was a bit noticeable and there was ever so slightly a little bit of uh, traction braking sometimes when accelerating at a lean angle coming out of some of the uh, the faster corners but uh, you know these are all things i'm sure you could dial in uh, in the pit lane to, to get just right for you but uh, you know if you can afford that olins oh man so so good so impressive uh, also working in tandem with those olins forks and, and shock were were the brakes so uh, again a standard uh, on your GYTR, you get the same four piston calipers as the standard R1 with a piston kit as well. Uh, and this then had a uh, special Brembo finery as well. Obviously, Yamaha were keen to uh, to show off what was available to people and um, they, they kitted it out with this. And, you know, you, you just needed to apply sort of two fingers to that lever, no more than that. And they were powerful enough to get you stopped from high speed uh, and just worked in tandem with that lovely suspension um, to, you know, to just, just pull you up nicely. And um, again, far more powerful than, than I would give it credit for, or I would trust, and I was braking way too early for a lot of the corners because I couldn't believe that, uh, you know, some calipers could be that, uh, could be that, that good, essentially. And, and the fact that this bike's got no ABS as well means that when you do brake hard, you don't get that pumping back through the lever, fighting you to stop the bike, which is a, a massive criticism of, of pretty much all Japanese superbikes. So, you might be sitting here thinking that uh, I really love this bike, it's the best thing since sliced bread and we should all rush out and drop at least 30 grand on one. But, and there's a big but here, as I may have alluded to already, I was only scratching the surface. And truth be told, you don't need all of this. I, I love the fact that the GYTR exists, but I don't know who it exists for. You see, 
your, your national level racer probably isn't going to go for it. And someone that's keen on track days like myself should just buy a standard superbike and do a couple of mods and it would be more than enough for them. It's still plenty fast enough. It's still plenty capable enough. And you know, for most people, it's going to be more than enough of a frill. So the fact that you can go out and spend upwards of 25,000 euros on one of these, I just, I don't think it's necessary for a lot of people. You know, it was absolutely fantastic to ride, but I can't sit here whole, and, and wholeheartedly say, this is a bike for track day enthusiasts. It, it's sort of not really. It, it's for sort of well-heeled people with a lot of money, are fortunate enough to get these exquisite machines, but, but truth be told, a lot of people don't need it. And actually, if you go to a track day in the UK, most bikes are sort of 10 years old anyway. Uh, and that's because, you know, people want to push their limits and they want to enjoy their track days. And if they crash, it's not going to be the sort of the end of the world for everyone. If you had this bike and you crashed it, you'd be absolutely devastated. And, uh, you know, a lot of people with their three, four thousand pound R6 or GSX-R1000 K5 or something might be having a much better day because they haven't got that worry in their mind. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it's an amazing motorcycle, uh, but, but perhaps a bit too much uh, for a lot of people. But if you do have deep pockets and you do fancy going down the GYTR route, Yamaha do actually do a, an R6 GYTR which builds on the standard R6 race in a similar fashion to the R1. And they also do a number of GYTR parts for the R7 as well. Now we were lucky enough to ride both of those bikes as well. Uh, and actually the R7 was the highlight of the trip for me. Uh, we used a much smaller track for that, but uh, with 75 odd horsepower on tap uh, and a nice roomy position, a really compliant chassis, good suspension, good tires, good brakes. It was so much fun. You were riding the bike, it wasn't riding you. Uh, and that felt so refreshing uh, in, <laughs> after riding the big super bikes. And uh, it, it just felt like a bike that you, you could be in command of and you could learn the limits and the art of corner speed and late braking without ever really running into trouble. Uh, I mean, it is very expensive. I do believe the bike we tested was, had about 7,000 euros worth of extras over the standard machine. Again, Yamaha couldn't give me a, a proper price figure. So again, really, really expensive. But uh, if you could afford it, that, that would be the best of the three. Likewise, the R6 was great fun as well, revving that four cylinder out. We don't really get four cylinder super sports in Europe anymore. So that was really, really good fun. Uh, nice compliant chassis again, good braking, good handling, uh, and really fun to wring its neck. Uh, and again, much more manageable uh, than, the, than the R1. Uh, so, uh, so to summarize, I'm glad that these things exist. I'm glad the R1's there for people that have the money and the ability to get the most out of it, they're gonna love it. But for a lot of people, it is too much bike and it's too much money, basically. So, uh, you know, perhaps stick to the smaller ones if you fancy going down that route, or if you just wanna get into track days, maybe a used bike or a standard R1 would be more than enough. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you wanna learn more about the R7 on track, why not click this link here? And if you are serious about your super bikes on circuit, why not click here? And whilst you're there, why not give us a like and a subscribe? Thanks very much, guys. I'll catch you soon.